Dick Clark was one of the most iconic figures in the history of American television and entertainment. But the man wouldn't have been what he was without his wife. Join Facts Verse as Dick Clark confesses she was the love of his life. Early Life Richard Wagstaff Clark, known professionally as Dick Clark, was born in Mount Vernon, New York on November 30, 1929. He grew up in the Bronx and attended Syracuse University, majoring in advertising and radio. After graduating, he landed his first job as a radio announcer in Utica, New York. This was at WRUN. He quickly became one of the most popular DJs in the area. He was known for his smooth voice and his ability to connect with his listeners. Clark's big break came in the early 50s when he began hosting a rock and roll radio show called The Dick Clark Show on WFIL in Philadelphia. It was a popular program that aired in the city during the 1950s and early 60s. The program was a major success and helped to launch his career. In 1956, he began hosting the TV show American Bandstand, which showcased popular artists and dance performers. American Bandstand was a music-based television program airing from 1952 to 1959. The show, which originated in Philly, was created by a figure named Bob Horn, but it was later taken over by Dick. Clark was able to secure the role of host after Bob was fired due to a drunk driving incident. Like Dick's radio program, the show featured live musical performances. This time, though, the whole thing was televised, and it allowed for some groundbreaking dance segments featuring teenagers dancing to the latest chart-topping hits. Over the next few years, with Dick Clark as the host, American Bandstand became a national phenomenon, attracting millions of viewers every day and introducing the world to some of the biggest names in rock and roll, including Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, and Jerry Lee Lewis. Some of the many other musicians that Dick Clark helped to launch the careers of include Bobby Darin, Brenda Lee, Chubby Checker, and Neil Sedaka. Dick Clark's time on American Bandstand also resulted in him becoming known as America's oldest teenager for his youthful appearance and energetic hosting style. Despite being middle-aged, he remained very active and engaged in popular culture, which made him relatable to younger audiences. He was able to successfully connect with multiple generations of fans throughout his career due to the youthful attitude he maintained even into his twilight years. What did Dick do besides American Bandstand? Dick also hosted a variety of other notable TV shows over the years, including The $10,000 Pyramid, TV's Bloopers and Practical Jokes, and New Year's Rockin' Eve, which aired every New Year's Eve and became a beloved tradition for millions of viewers. He hosted $10,000 Pyramid from 1973 to 88. It involved two contestants who try to guess words or phrases based on clues given by their celebrity partners. As the rounds progressed, the players moved up a pyramid of increasing cash prizes, with the top being worth $10,000. Clark was a beloved host on the show and known for his smooth, charismatic style. He also occasionally filled in as a celebrity partner when one of the scheduled guests couldn't make it. Even before that, he began hosting New Year's Rockin' Eve specials in 1972 as a replacement for Guy Lombardo's New Year's special, which had been a long-running tradition. The show was an instant success and quickly became a beloved part of New Year's celebrations across the United States. Clark continued to host the show until his death in 2012, with Ryan Seacrest taking over as co-host in 2006. Clark was known to enjoy his role as the host of the New Year's Rockin' Eve specials, and he often expressed his excitement for the show leading up to the big night. One story from his time hosting involved a mishap during the 2000 broadcast, when a technical glitch caused him to mistakenly announce that the new millennium had already begun. Despite the mistake, Clark was able to quickly recover and continue on with the show, demonstrating his professionalism and composure. Even after stepping down from his gig as host of American Bandstand in 1989, Dick Clark was always heavily involved in the music industry. In addition to his various hosting duties, he was also a producer for various record labels. He was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1993 in recognition of his contributions to the genre. He was also a philanthropist who supported numerous charities throughout his life. He was a strong advocate for diabetes research and was involved in several related organizations, including the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Dick's Personal Life 
Dick was married three times and had three children. His first marriage was to Barbara Mallory, and they had two children together. After their divorce, he married Loretta Martin and had one child with her. Later in life, he married Carrie Wigton, who was his wife until his death. Despite his busy career and frequent travel, he maintained a strong relationship with his family and was dedicated to being a good husband and father. In his final years, Dick's third wife helped him out quite a bit. In 2004, Dick suffered a stroke that forced him to retire from hosting New Year's Rockin' Eve. At that point, he'd been a part of it for over 30 years. Despite this setback, he still continued to make occasional appearances on the show and remained involved in other aspects of the entertainment industry. Many admired his determination and resilience during this difficult time, and he continued to inspire with his strength and positive attitude. Fans were stunned by how he handled his stroke and subsequent recovery. He didn't let it stop him from continuing to pursue his passions and work in the industry he loved. He also used his platform and influence to raise awareness for stroke prevention and recovery, inspiring others who may have been going through similar experiences. His dedication to his family, philanthropic work, and maintaining strong relationships with those around him served as an example of how to live a fulfilling and meaningful life. Dick Clark's third wife, Carrie Wigton, was a constant source of support for him during his recovery from his stroke. She was with him 24-7 and even went as far as to quit her job to be there for him full-time. Her dedication and love for him were evident in everything she did, and she played a crucial role in helping him through one of the most challenging times in his life. It's clear their relationship was a strong and loving one, and they were a great team, both personally and professionally. Sadly, Clark passed away April 18, 2012 from a heart attack, just a few months after making his final appearance on a New Year's Rockin' Eve special. He was 82 years old at the time of his death. His death was widely mourned throughout the entertainment industry and among fans of his work. Funny Stories from His Career During a live broadcast in the 80s, Clark accidentally introduced Aretha Franklin as Areola Franklin, the Queen of Soul was understandably taken aback, but managed to keep her composure and deliver a stunning performance. Another naming mishap came years later. During a New Year's Rockin' Eve special in the 1990s, he mistakenly referred to the rapper LL Cool J as L Cool JJ. The mistake caused LL to burst out laughing and become even more popular with fans who appreciated his sense of humor. Dick also had a propensity for dancing. In the early days of American Bandstand, Clark would often make up dance moves on the spot to fill airtime. One time, he invented a move called the swivel hips and got the studio audience to join in. Little did he know the move would become a sensation and be imitated by teenagers all across the country. He was also known for his love of puns and wordplay. On one episode of American Bandstand, he introduced a group called the Fendermen by saying, these guys really know how to pluck their strings and they're not bad on the guitar either. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Dick Clark? Let us know in the comments section below.